and change. So, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Change is next. Change is coming. Everything today in the refrigeration and in the retail market is talking about change. Change is next. Well, actually, this is not entirely correct. By definition, change has already happened. Change was yesterday. So if you're not ready for it, then sorry, it's too late. So. Tonight, I would like to talk about three big changes that are impacting the commercial refrigeration. The first change is us, people. So we as people, we as consumers, is 7.4 billion of us on this small planet. Half are connected to the internet and 21% are active online shoppers. What does that mean? 12 zeros, you know what that means? Trillions, that's two trillion US dollars every year are traded online, okay? So this is a massive number. And this number is growing every year by 20%. Most of it is technical stuff, you know, high tech, and this is 22% of it. And some of it is also grocery. This is also happening, but it's still a small portion of the business. Over the last 20 years, we went through at least three different generations. And, uh, you know, things today change so fast and are so different from what they used to be. Take me, for example. I'm a guy born in the 70s. I'm an X-generation guy, okay? So X-generation people, they have a job. They have a salary. They have the money. They have a house. They have a mortgage on the house. They have kids. They have a wife. They have a minivan and so on. They've got the money. They've got the spending power. And they also know very well what they want. They also know very well, you know, what they want to have. That's the X generation. The Y generation, so the guys born after the 1990s and so, are completely different, you know. Let's make one example. When I wanted to interact with my friends when I was young, I used to go to a nice restaurant or a nice pizzeria. I used to sit down with them and talk for a couple of hours. Now take five guys from the 90s, put them in one room for five hours, sitting next to each other, what happens? You're just there clicking. You don't hear anything. You just, oh, no, don't talk. Just type messages. Okay. So this is what they do, completely different. So generations really change. And we should really understand what they do in these changes. So. Let's concentrate on the generations uh, that have the buying power today. So the X generation, as I said earlier, has the buying power today. So people from the X generation, they know what they want, okay? So they want their supermarkets, they want their hypermarkets, they want their discounts, they want their stores the way they are because they're used to it, okay? They know where to find the things that they need. What they also need is the online channel. It's so convenient, it's so fast, it's nice to be buying online what we really want. So CDs, DVDs, games, toys, electronics, everything is available on the internet and we can buy it. So what the X generation wants is the multi-channel approach. So to be able to buy from multiple channels at the same time. The Y generation, so the young guys connected and so on. Why are we talking about the Y generation? They're still too young. They don't have the buying power today but they are the consumers of tomorrow. And they are so different that today we need to understand what they really want in order to be able to anticipate what will come in a couple of years from now. So how are they? First of all, they are truly connected. They live with their phones. 
in their hands. Actually, their phones are part of their bodies. So, and they constantly are looking around like vampires, you know, looking for blood. They are looking for uh, Wi-Fi connections like this for free. If it's a free Wi-Fi connection, be sure they're attached to it. They need it, you know, like blood. They don't think as individuals anymore. They think social. Everything they do is social. They share everything. Pictures, thoughts, images, everything is shared because they're social. They share everything. They even share their cars. They don't own cars anymore. They just grab one when they need it, and they leave it when they're done with it. This is a sharing economy. But when they need something, they need it now. They need it pronto, fast, right now. So within one minute, I want the things that I want. They even have a button that they put on the refrigerator in the US. They push that button, and they get the pizza delivered within 10 minutes to their door because they don't have time to wait. Then there is the web rooming phenomenon. Web rooming means 40% of online shoppers today, they decide online by comparing products what to buy, but then they go into a physical store to buy their things. Only 25% does the opposite, okay? So this should let us think. What is this? The omni-channel. So this becomes a seamless experience with all those channels interacting together, giving those young guys the opportunity to buy what they want immediately. This is the omnichannel experience. Now to the second change for tonight, the retail. What is changing in the retail? And where will the retail be focusing over the next four years? First of all, to be online is a standard today. There's no choice. You have to be online. The choice is to be offline. The choice, and it's a hard one, is to invest in brick and mortar. So to invest in your physical store. That's a tough choice. Second, there is no multi-channel or omni-channel in the future. There's a one channel, the whole thing, the whole channel. You cannot choose to play in one or the other. You have to play in the whole thing. And this means, in the end, to find solutions, but not one solution. You have to find a very specific solution for the very specific need. This turns into a focus by the retail, finally, in the future. No more money to be invested in the price war. Buy one, get 10, buy 10, get free of charge for 12 years afterwards, stuff, and so on. But really investments in the future. Investments in concepts and things that are needed for future strategies. All in all, this turns into one thing, which is good for the industry. The retail has to invest and will keep investing for the next years. They're obliged to do that. They have to do that. Third and last change for tonight, the physical store. And of course, the impact of the change of the physical store to the commercial refrigeration. You know, I'm an Italian guy, I was born in Italy, and when I went to school, I studied Dante Alighieri. I'm sure you all know about Dante Alighieri. Dante wrote about hell, about heaven, and about something that is very Italian, by the way, in the middle. You're not good, you're not bad either, you're just there stuck in the middle. This thing is called il purgatorio, the purgatory, okay? So keep these concepts in mind now for the next couple of slides. This is hell. For commercial refrigeration, this is death. So, gone. Online grocery shopping, people say, it's going to be the death of commercial refrigeration. Hmm? This is heaven. Please don't call this a point of sales. <laughs> That's just too easy. This is a point of experience. Don't call it, please, okay? Point of sales, point of experience. This is a place where you can touch with your eyes, you can hear with your nose, and you can smell with your ears. Everything is involved, all your senses. So you go to a place like this, and you're just in heaven, okay? This is a place of contact, where people interact together. And this is a place where people, consumers, get the answers to the very specific questions that they have. 
which cheese goes with this wine, what kind of champagne should I buy with this kind of dessert, you know, all those questions need answers. And the store becomes that place where all the answers are being presented. So there must be a reason for being in that store. So we were talking earlier about the young generation. Why do you think that they call it the Y generation? Yeah, sure, because the letter Y comes after the letter X, maybe? No, because they keep asking why. Why? Why is this? Why is that? They ask questions and they need answers. And the answer that they need lies in the experience that they make in that particular place. That place gives them added value. Okay? So, change. Back to the first slide. With all these changes happening, how does commercial refrigeration fit in? How should commercial refrigeration change? to cope with all these things that are happening around commercial refrigeration. Well, today, commercial refrigeration is the demon ruling the circle of energy wars. <laughs> it's a necessary evil. People need commercial refrigeration. That's it. So, to be natural is a must. To be F-gas compliant is a given. You have to be. So what is the path? There is no limbo, no purgatory where refrigeration can hide. It must choose a clear path. And to me, that path is quite clear. It's the path to become an integrated, invisible partner for the retailer. It's invisible because it's integrated with all infrastructures of the building, HVAC, heating, water treatment, air treatment, etc., fully integrated. It's invisible because it's fully integrated with the sales, advertisement, and merchandising tools of the retail. It blends in. You don't even see it. But most of all, commercial refrigeration must give the answers that the consumers are looking for in the store in terms of relationship, interaction, and communication. This is what then commercial refrigeration must do. So on and all, the path to heaven for commercial refrigeration, in my opinion, is simple. is to become for the retail, then the integrated, invisible partner. Simple as that. Thank you very much for your attention.